As you grow up as, as a woman, you sort of presume a certain sort of secondary nature to things um, and that, uh, that, you know, you're allowed to be confident and it doesn't mean that you have to be mean or nasty or you can be confident and still proud of yourself and nice. Hi, I'm Sarah Snook and this is my Glamour Unfiltered. I think that uh, they are actually all likable in some ways. I think they're um, they're unusual and they're um, familiar, and I think everybody can relate in some way to having a family member, if not a whole family, like that. Yeah, they might be unlikable in some ways, but there's some sort of redeeming quality within each of them. There's a lot of vulnerability in Shiv, but um, that's something that's also attractive to me about Shiv, that she's, um, that she's somebody who throws that defense up in a confident way, and that she's um, able to use humor to deflect or, or just uh, <laughs> a terrible kind of blank face, <laughs> a bit of side eye to deflect. My character in season three develops, I think, in the way that she's moving away from season one and season two. Uh, she had a career outside of the family and then she got married and now she's with her husband inside the family business and he's inside the family a little more. And I think at this point, after Kendall's revelation, the journey for Shiv is really about defining who she is and who she wants to be for this season. Yeah, I think, um, but I think the same could be thrown back at Kendall. I think uh, I think he thinks that he's a good person, but he's not a good person, you know? And I think that part of that is a sibling rivalry and part of that is probably uh, accurate and truthful on, on both accounts. What is the meaning of good in this family is is maybe a little more flexible and, and permeable than what is like, you know, actually good and altruistic and maybe something more philanthropic or, or just a better human being outside of this kind of vicious Roy family. I think each of the characters, no matter who they are, Logan, Tom, Greg, Kendall, they all think they are good, but not necessarily are. <laughs> I love being able to be maybe tougher than I am and to be able to, there's just some, she got some great lines. She's got some, some great one-liners and some great moments of just, uh, it's maybe, maybe share a silent opinion and sharing her opinion silently, but whether that's through a bit of a side eye or, or something else, it's great, yeah. I think that's part of the fun is discovering why they're together and and the longer we get to play these characters the more I understand their history and who they are and who they are together and and that's also like what is really fun about that is it's constantly evolving and developing and 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 Jesse and the writing team are, are, are so um, engaged with these characters and trust us as well to perform what they throw down for us that um, it's just exciting to see where they're going to take us. Money doesn't make you happy, I think, is what I've learned about wealth. And certainly the Roy's interns aren't happy um, in a lot of ways, and they are in others, <laughs> but I'm not sure that it's money that makes them happy. And then power, it, power is a, is a corrupting thing, I think. Absolute power corrupts absolutely, is that old saying, and, and I think that's definitely true for the Roy's. We deal with, with with promoting female power in, in, in succession as we would with any other uh, gender in that um, they are equal and seen as such. It's only when it's um, a character element, I think, for, for Logan or for Kendall, there's a moment in, in episode two where he um, he calls out Shiv for only being valuable for her teats, which is just like, it says more about the men, I think, in the show that um, decide to treat women differently uh, than it does about the women because ostensibly they have equal power. I think she wouldn't call herself a feminist, but she right. definitely is. Feminism is about equal opportunity and about being equal to men, not having a, um, a higher power or uh, more power than men. And so um, I think, yes, it, the show is innately feminist because of that, the, the expectation that women are equal. Every woman has in some way, in some form, um, 
Absolutely. And, uh, but I think that, you know, for Shiv, one of the things that I love playing her for is that she, I've said this before, but she deserves to, she believes she deserves to be in every room that she's in and that the, the, there's a glass ceiling for her. It's, it doesn't really exist because she's beyond privilege and beyond money and power that she can afford to buy the building and smash the ceiling of <laughs> that building in the first place. So yes, she might have limitations in some ways, but in some, but for Shiv, I feel that just not acknowledging those limitations due to gender means that they don't exist. And I kind of like that. Mm -hmm. It's like, don't engage with it. Mm -hmm. And then it doesn't exist. <laughs> like everybody does really just have a good firm chat to them. <laughs> I sort of developed an older sister character for a while. It was like, you know, if I was having a fit about feeling the right sort of confidence level that I wanted to, it was like, well, well, what are you gonna do about it, Sarah? You're gonna just, uh, you're gonna complain all day or all night, or you're gonna, you know, buck up and get out there and mm -hmm. do something. You know, you can, you're allowed to. I acknowledge your feelings, you're allowed to be upset, but, you know, make a decision. Just develop a, an alter ego who's a little bit more, um, who believes in you a little more than maybe you do at the time. Kendall is is someone who so more publicly deals with with mental health and and his um, I guess publicly as his character uh, not necessarily public facing in the world of the Roys and Succession but um, he's probably the one who goes through the journeys of, of depression and and ill mental health uh, more publicly than the Roys do but I think that probably it affects each of the characters in in their own way. I love nature and I just get out into into nature as much as possible and I think really um, growing up in a way that uh, uh, I, I had access to nature, that was really important to me growing up that I've realised now that was an important element of my childhood. I certainly have always felt pretty strongly about being proud of oneself no matter what you look like. Oftentimes. I find as a woman, you're more likely to be far more cruel to yourself than you ever are about other people or to other people. And so why can't you give yourself the, the grace of kindness as well? And that's not always easy, of course. It's not at all. Roman, for sure. Yeah. Like we have such a great rapport and repartee and, you know, like battle in, in sort of words and looks. And physically, yeah, genuinely physically. <laughs> There's a scene that we have in, in episode two where um, some donuts arrive and they get called um, irrelevant donuts and then in turns very relevant donuts. And I just love that <laughs> these, like that pastries, that like sweet desserts can, can be the thing that turns a whole moment. And we had a lot of fun shooting that scene. I say plastic Jesus to Kendall at one point and I think that's perfect. <laughs> Yeah, great. I mean, I feel like it's a really easy Halloween costume. Go out there and get a red bulb wig and see what you can do. But I want to like lay down a challenge to do a zombie shiv or a zombie <laughs> vampire shiv or, and maybe like, I don't know, where will I be on the 31st? I wonder if there's a potential like disguise I could go out in as shiv and no one would think it was me because hopefully there's other shivs that I could blend into with. <laughs>